uh, welcome to uh, the CME uh, and uh, of course I am supposed to talk about Ayurvedic Capability to Psychiatric Disorder. Let me remind you that I am not a psychiatrist by practice, I am a general Ayurvedic practitioner. So from I will be dealing with the issue only from the point of view of a general Ayurvedic practitioner and the practical issues which you come across in the routine clinical practice related to psychiatry. So it's not that I'm talking like a psychiatric specialist. Uh, anyway, before going into the topic, there are certain important issues which are basically introductory. The first of the question is uh, what is mind? Now from Ayurvedic point of view, mind or manas is well defined. Manas is a dravya and it means it has a function as well as a, a guna or property. So dravya is anything which has a, a guna and karma is a dravya and manas is a dravya and that's what Karaka has said Khadin Yatma Manak Kalaha Dishastya Dravya Sangraha Sendriyam Chetanam Dravyam and Nirindriyam Achetanam that's about the dravya as said. Now and it's also an Indriya, one of the means of dealing with or connecting with the Atma to produce the knowledge. So you Atma, Mana, Indriya, these have to have a Sannikarsha with the Artha. Artha is the object which has to be perceived through any of the sensory organs. So it's one of the mediators of the sensations to the Atma. This is the Indian philosophical concept. It's not related to only Ayurveda. It is the Indian philosophical concept. Whereas with the contemporary science, the extent of the mind or the existence of the mind is not fully really understood. It is defined in various forms and it is considered as if something very vague or subtle where it has been defined as a something which is responsible for one's thoughts and feelings and it is also the seat of the faculty of reason and the aspect of intellect. But these are not really clearly really defined. It also is related to perception, memory, emotion, so on. Whereas from Ayurvedic point of view, these functions are well defined. The function of Atma and function of Manas are well defined and they are better understood. Anyway, I will not go into that theory portion detail as such. From the contemporary current issue, the one of the important issues from the point of view of psychiatry and psychiatry related to medicines. Majority of the pharmacological issues or pharmacological entities related to the mind, they are supposed to relate to the brain. And now with lots of research, there are many, many investigations or studies done where the functions of the mind, they are related to the biochemical changes seen in the brain and hence the general phys physiological aspects would be mind is something related to the believed to be something related to the brain but the question is whether it's really the brain which matters about the mind or is there something more than that from ayurvedic point of view hridaya is the chetana sthana hridaya chetana sthana uttam hridaya is considered the chetana sthana heart is the chetana sthana whereas According to the majority of the physiologists now, brain is the seat of mind. But still, even in the contemporary science, there, is, there are a good number of people who differ from that popular concept of the brain being the seat of the mind. Rather, there are people or there are many now observations which are done to prove that heart is the area where the emotions are located. Now, I I have just put in a few of those uh, uh, views and the authors of different views on both the sides. Some people are articles which are, are even the textual supports which suggest the brain as the physical place where the mind resides and the literary support to suggest the other way where heart is the master and brain is the servant. Now, this kind of controversy exists and uh, uh, of course there is a lot of confusion among the contemporary scientists 
and I have just presented a result of uh, a survey conducted among the psychiatrist practitioners in India and uh, the results are as such, the survey about the opinion about the mind among the practicing, practicing psychiatrists. This is not about the general practitioners, those who are practicing psychiatry uh, from the result of a survey done where 75 percent of the people, they, are, say that, they say that psychiatry is concerned to the mind, but none of them could give the brain as the seat of mind with the definite as such. 80.5% felt that mental denoted the mind, whereas uh, a large number of people believe that there is something entity called as mind, but it cannot be just uh, identified. So it is considered to be something different from the brain. So whether it is the brain and the mind which has to be considered, there is a lot of difference of opinion. Who, but there is one breakthrough in the contemporary sense. John Andrew Armour, he is the one who has established an anatomical entity which is also considered as a the heart brain and he has written a monograph on that with all his research studies where he has proved that there is a neurological system, a complex neurological nervous system called as and he has named it as cardiac nervous system which has comprised of a large number of neurons and its relationship with the, the mind and the emotions. So emotions being related to the heart. That's the, the basic idea of this new concept or rather it is a new concept as such. Uh, anyway, I will not go into the controversy much as such. I will not give a, go into the theoretical aspect. But practically, whenever you talk to somebody and with all the literature, if you welcome someone, would you welcome as hearty welcome or heady welcome? I think heart is the emotion and literature and everyone or rather the uh, uh, in general the common belief or common feeling is that heart is a seed. When you identify yourselves and you say I, whether you touch your chest or whether you touch your head, those who believe that the soul is in the brain, they should say that I am here by touching the head. Whereas a person who would be saying that, or uh, who will be pleading for the heart as the source of emotion would be touching the heart and I belong to that view and I strongly say that heart is the seat of emotion and uh, the school of thought which says that heart is the master and brain is the servant. When the emotions do occur in the heart, the brain controls that. Anyway, that's one aspect. Now there is, before we going into the issue of uh, the clinical aspect, we should be aware of uh, one important issue that is Mental Health Care Act. So I will just jump over from the theory part to the real, uh, the real issues which are related to the clinical practice. Uh, the clinical practice related to the psychiatry is regulated by Mental Health Care Act in 2017 which was passed through. And the important, certain important aspects, I am not going into the detail of that whole act as such, but certain basic issues which every clinician should be aware of. From the point of view of a general clinician's point of view, I am just picking up a few of the points from that Mental Health Care Act which are relevant. Now, a mental illness is defined in the act as a, a substantial disorder of thinking, mood and perception, orientation or memory and it grossly impairs judgment, behavior, capacity to recognize reality or ability to meet the ordinary demands of life. So that is one. So certain of those conditions which we otherwise consider as a psychiatric illness may not be considered as a mental illness as long as they do not affect the day to day activity of the person. So mental conditions associated with the abuse of alcohol as well as the drugs also are included as a mental illness. But it doesn't regard a mental retardation as a condition as such. So mental retardation is not a psychiatric illness or congenital or developmental errors also are not considered as a, a mental illness. This is a, the important issue which we have to be very clear cut about that because of the existing law over that. Of course, the major highlights of the new Mental Health Care Act that which was passed in 2017, earlier there was a different Mental Health Care Act of, as such. 
the modified mental health care act gives certain issues where a patient has a right to access of the mental health care and there is a, the state has a responsibility of taking care of this and there is a insurance cover also we will not go into those details but i will just deal with certain of those points which are important from our routine clinical point of view of course one of significance uh, the difference compared to the earlier one is uh, the suicide is not to be considered as a crime earlier before 2017 an attempt to suicide was considered to be a crime and it had to be adjudicated under criminal act whereas with the current law it's not so that's uh, the one of the issues then a uh, some more of the issues related to the practice clinical practice in the mental health care act would be the mental health professional according to the law is uh, a psychiatrist as defined as a, we will come to that defined class 10 i will just deal with that in the next slide or a professional who is registered with the state authority there is a need to register yourself as a mental or a psychiatric practitioner uh, for practicing or dealing with the psychiatric conditions so if you are uh, 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 treating a psychiatric illness or mental illness i would just say mental illness it's mandatory that there should be a registration in the specific uh, board or a uh, some state setup and of course one important is uh, a professional having post graduate degree of ayurveda in manovijnan evam manasaroga also is considered or recognized as a mental health professional that's one of the important breakthrough or change in the concept of 2017 mental health care act of course the post graduate degree in homeopathy yunani and siddha the uh, other system also is uh, added to the list of mental health professionals a clinical psychologist is having a recognized qualification in clinical psychology from an institution or having a post graduate degree in psychology clinical psychology etc so you may be a healthcare practitioner practicing a as a mental health professional but a clinical psychologist is something different where a person would have a, a qualification in psychology as per the council uh, indian council act of 1992 now the another important issue related to the mental health care act is uh, the mental health establishments like if you are running a hospital it needs to be registered so mental health establishment they need to be registered in a central or state mental health authority has to be established and it has to be registered and a state mental health authority is to be established which is having the responsibility of uh, registering and appointing nominated representatives and so on so there has to be a separate setup a simple registered medical practitioner may not just present as a mental health specialist in karnataka of course the, there is a website where you need to register and the whole process of registration of the mental health establishment as well as mental health professionals is uh, already established that health authority in karnataka is established so is the case with the other states too as well now that's about the legal issue uh, and of course there could be lots of discussion about that part but i will not spend more time my purpose is just to sensitize that the health care or uh, practicing a psychiatric uh, conditions is regulated under a separate law and we need to be aware of the existing law and uh, that's uh, one of the important issues as such